Okay, so I was initially gonna record something else, but then I got a comment on my previous walking cycle tutorial. The comment said I should update the video, and I kinda agree, it's pretty old. Now don't worry, I'm still working on your suggestions, but before I get into that, I should probably update the most basic ones that most of you probably need. I will still make your suggestions, but don't forget to leave them in the comments below, cause I kinda need your ideas to make the tutorials, guys. Now before I get in the video, I want you to hit that subscribe button and comment the suggestion for the next tutorial. Now I think we're done with that, so let's get in the video. Now let's get into walking animation first, because it's pretty simple and yet very original. There is a simple way that everyone learns walking and running animation cycles. And by everyone, I mean a big most. First, you see the idea from some YouTuber, then you replicate it, then you use the idea yourself, and then you modify it so it suits your animating style better. I myself learned this cycle from someone else and then adjusted it to myself. So if I summon in Steve, let's just place him in the center of the world because I have OCD, and first let's put him in a relaxed stance. Okay, he looks pretty relaxed. Now, the first step to make a good walking cycle is to animate the feet, I mean the legs. So he's standing right here, and what I could do is basically move move this foot backwards and this forward, and then move the guy itself, but where's the originality in that? That doesn't look very realistic. I mean, who walks like this? Do you honestly walk like this? No. Why do you animate like this? Uh, well, don't. So, if you're a noob, yes, this is a pretty basic way, and you could use this technique if it, the other is too hard. If you want to be more original, you gotta take more time. That's why I layered each step into keyframes. So, what happens when you walk? This foot gets backwards, this foot gets bent so it can be placed down, and then basically you continue the step. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend this foot and move it backwards because he just took a step, and the other foot is gonna be bent so he can place it down, and this is basically the first step. Uh, I'm gonna move the character itself forward. Now, a lot of you guys do this mistake. You just place him forward, say that's good, but then you get this foot sliding effect. I mean, let's say you put it here, and the foot slides. Or you put him here, and the foot slides again. And then you ask me, why is the foot sliding? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. It didn't move the character good enough. Well, let, let's see. Remember where this point is. This is where he's standing. When he stands up, this point should be at the exact same place. So let's move it forward, and also a bit up. So now it's in the same place if we toggle between the frames, and when he goes like this, the foot is not sliding. Well, is that your answer? Because if so, this is the only mistake you're doing. You have to place the character exactly in the way, in the place he was before. Like, the point was here, he's now standing on the point, so the point should be exactly where it was before. The character itself moved forward, but the foot stayed exactly the same place. And this is what you need in order to stop the foot sliding thing. Let's say you select the keyframes and then give them an ease in. Of course your foot is sliding, because the character is moving with a linear motion and the feet are moving at an eased motion, so this couldn't work, guys. Or you use linear here, or you could apply A's in and out on your character, I mean A's in. This works just fine. So the next step, go three frames forward, and move this foot even more backwards, and this foot should be placed on the ground now. Now what you're gonna do with the character, first of all, you're gonna place the character down so you see where it is. So this foot is... place him down so this foot is on the ground. And now you can adjust the other foot, because this is too low. The, f the feet have to be in the, same, in the same height, so now they're on the same heights, yeah. Now, once you've done that, once you adjusted the heights, you can move him left and right, of course. Back to the same point where it was before, so I think it was here, yep. And if I play this now, that looks pretty original. After that, move three frames forward again, and now we're gonna concentrate on the other foot, because he's stepping on this foot and this is the main foot, so we're gonna focus on this one. What you wanna do is bend the foot, and bend it, oh sh the bottom of the foot has to be perfectly facing the ground, so you know you have to bend it in a way it's straight. And this time, before adjusting the last foot, I'm gonna adjust the character so it fits this... so it fits this leg. I'm gonna place him down so the height is settled, 
Now I'm gonna play some left and right. He was this foot where it's touching the ground is right here. So I have to move him move him so this point is in exactly the same place. Like so. After that I can adjust the other leg, which is now holding the ground. It was here before, so now I gotta put this point back here. If I bend it a bit, it's not enough, so I have to adjust it like so. Well, yeah, that's pretty close. You don't have to be 100% accurate, it looks pretty nice. From here, from this step, this foot should be straight up. So now I'm gonna adjust him here, he was here, now he is here. So yeah, once this happens, this major step, this foot isn't even touching the ground. So what you can do with this foot is basically bend it because he's taking another step. And what you've done here is one quick step. This is pretty nice. Now move three frames forward because we're not quite done yet. But we're gonna move this backwards and bend it just a little bit and put the foot in an unraveling position, like like this. He's taking a step now. Now this looks rather familiar. This is the first frame here except inverted. So we've reached the end of the cycle, except we have to make it the same on the other side again. So be right back. Once you reach this spot, this frame would be the continuing of this one, so what you can do from here is just select the frames, press Ctrl plus C to copy, move 3 frames forward and press Ctrl plus V to paste. And what happens here is you continue the cycle. What you do from here is just adjust the character so it walks. There's no automatic way to do this, you have to manually adjust the character into each frame. So be right back. In the end, you should get something like this. Now the problem is you always have to adjust the body manually, but the reason this is a cycle is because you can copy the rest of the frames perfectly and it matches with your character. Now this would be a cycle if you would put Steve in a folder and then what you would do from here is you could rotate the folder and you have Steve walking in a different direction. If I rotate the folder, Steve is walking in a different direction now. So you could basically customize that as well, plus the walking is already animated. But you have to animate all of this manually first. So the legs and the character are done. What you want to be careful about now is the body. So this frame, when one of the legs is unraveling for the step, the body should be bent towards it, facing this leg, and maybe give it a little bend, because why not? This is where the body should be facing this leg, which is unraveling. Give the body easy in and out transitions and see how it goes. Now on the next frame where it's unraveling would be this one, make it face the other way. Simple as that. This is the body. Okay, maybe also give it a little bend because I feel like it's, it's, yeah. We'll adjust later. Okay, the next frame would be here, so I'm just gonna place a frame here. And we get this. Yeah, looks derpy, I know. But that's because you didn't adjust the head yet. The head should always be facing forward, unless you're trying to make it face left and right, because in that case, it would be a little more complex. You should adjust the body's motion to that as well. At the end, don't forget to apply ease in and out to the head as well, or else it will be delayed from the body. So now it's facing forward, but you could add some pretty cool effects if you were to use a different ease in and out, because the head wouldn't be directly where the body is, but don't overreact, or else it might look weird. Keeping it linear actually won't be so weird if you had smaller movements. For example, the body is moving 14 degrees to the right. If this number was smaller, the head would actually look realistic as if it's trying to follow the body. But the movements here are too big, so let's just keep it is in and out as it was before. Now those of you who know my overlapping technique should know that the hands shouldn't be in the same line as the body but rather overlapped a bit forward so i'm going to move the bot i'm going to move the hands here the body was facing forward so this hand should be coming forward on this side while it was bent backwards on this side this hand should go backwards as well the hands too should have an ease in and out transitions repeat this process by switching between the arms mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the end, you should get something that looks like this. Might be a little too extreme, maybe too fast, but I don't have enough time for you to explain a decent walking animation, so you're gonna have to do with this. It looks pretty realistic and it honestly it's much better than what I see from you guys. No offense, 
I know you're still learning, but this is something to start off from. And if you learn something from this, you can adjust it to your own animating, to your own animating style, which will benefit you as an animator itself. Trust me, this is one of the simplest things in animation. For example, the divided four animation I'm working on right now is a lot more complex. Next off is the running animation. As I said in the start, most people learn walking and running animation cycles from other people. I learned this one from a YouTuber called Kazakoja. You might know him for his reality series, which is by the way pretty damn amazing. And it's also the foundation based on which I made Divided. So all thanks to him, he's a really great YouTuber, you should probably check out his channel as well. And if you want to learn the running cycle in detail, you should probably go check out his video instead of mine. This is just a brief explanation. Now that we've got Steve in a nice relaxed stance, we can start animating. First off, this running tutorial requires you to animate on a 45 degree angle. So to start things off, I'm gonna slant Steve 45 degrees forward. Yup. Might seem weird at start, but it actually looks nice. And I'm actually using this running tutorial. I mean, this running technique. Now, select one of the legs, which is gonna be the starting leg. I'm gonna select right leg and extend it completely. Leave those two, those doesn't matter. Just extend the X and the bend. The other leg should be bring, brought up forward and bent probably as much as it can. Then the body should be bent upwards a bit so the character can see where it's going and bent so it sh gives this leg some space. The head should be facing forward as always, which is normal. I mean, when you run, you walk, you look forward. This is normal. The arms with a bit of delay are facing forward as well. So rotate the Rotate the Y, rotate the Z if you need to, and the X, and bend this. The other arm should do the same, but of course backwards. So, rotate the Y, rotate the Z, rotate the X, and bend it so it's aligned with the body, basically. And this is the starting stance of your running cycle. Looks like this right now, so maybe give it a bit of... Yeah, this looks nice. Easy in and out cubic. It's a bit fast, though. I probably should move this here yeah depends on how fast you want the running animation to be you should make frames for it so I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with two frames on the timeline and basically go on like this because I want my running animation to be pretty fast so the main leg goes back and gets bent the other leg goes down and gets extended next frame this leg goes down and bent so it's on the floor and this leg goes down and bends more, so it's just above the floor. From here, the legs switch. This leg is now the main leg, and this leg is now upwards and bent as much as it can. Then this leg goes back and bends. This leg goes forward and unbends. Then you repeat the process here. Make this leg fly, float, not fly. And basically, if you come back to the beginning, this is the continuing of this. So now I can just copy, paste paste and now you should get something like this and this is basically done for the legs this is all you need to know but when the legs are up the body should actually be moved so it gives this leg some space so I should probably move these frames here yeah probably should now search for the next frame where it's like this so here when it's above the ground this body's like this rotated the other way the other way and here as well and basically give the body easy in and out motion copy the last two paste because it's much simpler than animating everything by hand paste once you have that you should probably do the same for the head so adjust the head so it's facing the direction it should be and this looks pretty accurate actually not more uh, corrections needed there this should look like this, and this looks nice, except the hands are still derpy. So, adjust the hands the same way you were, to, you were to do before, except give them a bit of delay. The running animation is pretty fast, so instead of two ticks, put it back to one tick, because too much delay is, again, not that good. If you don't know where to place the arm, you should reset all the values and start from here, because, for my opinion, it's a lot easier this way, and I think it will benefit you too. So, it's just a fun thing to know. Rotate the arm, place it forward, bend it. That's it. Now give the arm A's in and out, or try A's in and out sign, because it's a much slighter effect, because it looks nice, why not? You should try to experiment stuff. From here, as you see, 
the delay is now making it look pretty derpy. The arms are flapping around, so we shouldn't use delay at all. Because this looks more realistic than delay. So in this case, don't use overlap, use the regular technique. How do you move him, you say? Well, it's pretty simple. From here, you pick a random point, move him forward, and that's it. Yeah, just don't do this, because then the legs are sliding again. In the running tutorial, you can't actually adjust every step by step, but you have to adjust the entire thing, because it's easier, doesn't take that much work. So, as you see, it steps on this place, and then it extends from this place, so this looks pretty realistic. What's also fun about running tutorials is that you don't have to be as accurate as you would in walking, because this is fast, no one's gonna be able to notice all the tiny flaws. This is why animating fights and actions is a lot nicer, because you can have your animation have a lot of flaws, but no one will notice because it's so fast. The one thing that could help you is to put Steve in a folder again, and from here you would to move Steve. He's standing on the ground here, you should make a keyframe, and this is where he is stand, extending, so you should make frames. You should make frames everywhere where he's on the ground. Once you've made all the frames where his legs are in contact with the ground, the ones where he's flying could be lifted up by about one, one and a half. Then you apply this to every single time where he's above the ground. And what we've done is a little bounce animation where he runs. And this looks pretty realistic, so this is a nice running tutorial. If you want to go even further, you can try to apply transitions to this, because as far as we know, this folder is layered down. This is only using the Y, and it wouldn't hurt anyone if you were to use transitions here. This won't mess up your main action, and it's perfectly fine. So let's try to do this and see how it goes. Okay, if we play this back now... Wow, that's a nice running animation. Huh, <laughs> I hope this was helpful though. Because this is all I have for you today. I think it was a lot. I don't know. You could try to learn something yourself from this. And something I want to beg you guys to please suggest your ideas in the comments. I will make them because I I am making these tutorials based off based on your suggestions. Also, if you like the video, you should go check out our Discord server because you can learn a lot more there because you can talk to me personally, not through a video. So I'll recommend that as well. Now, thank you for watching and uh, stay sharp.